channel booktube Sarah here and welcome to my channel today I'm coming to you with my weekly reviews for October the 20th through the 26th today's video is being brought to you by David's cold 911 tea <laughs> I keep always meaning to show you guys the tea that I'm drinking when I do these videos but I always forget so I am coming off of a cold I had a cold all last week uh, congested a little bit of a cough so I've been enjoying my cold 911 tea from David's I keep this thing in stock in my cupboard. Sorry if you can hear Gorn purring in the background, um, but um, I love this stuff. I think it's absolutely fantastic. There are no medicinal properties in it, but it does have chamomile and things like that. So it's great to drink at night when you're not feeling well. It really helps the sinuses and, and the coughing and stuff. So yeah, I absolutely recommend this one. So cheers. Here's today's tea. So. And I mean, how can you not love this super awesome mug? I think it's so, 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 so cute with the inside. I really love it. I think I got it in a gift pack with the cold 911 tea. But anyway, on to the books. So as per usual, I will, and I keep forgetting to mention this as well, but I do have timestamps in the description box below. So if you want to jump ahead to a different book, please feel free to do so. So you, if you're only interested in hearing about that book or just certain books, please feel free to use the uh, timestamps to jump around. So the first book that I finished this week, there were six of them this week, you guys. I know, quite a departure from the three last week, but I knew that was going to be the case. Next week, potentially, we're looking at even more because um, end of the month, trying to finish all the books. So the first one, again, for this week is Christmas Angels by Nancy Ningle. This is a contemporary romance novel. I listened to it on, on audio. It was narrated by Kristen Cabellini. Um, this came out on October 15th, 2019. Uh, average rating on Goodreads of 4.33 stars. I gave this one four stars. It was absolutely adorable. Um, special thanks to NetGalley and St. Martins for sending me an eARC copy of this book to review. So, this book was custom made to become a Hallmark movie. That's all I have to say. <laughs> if you love the Hallmark Christmas movies that come out every year, you need to read this book. It was super, super adorable. So our main character's name is Liz, and she spent a lot of her summers at this lodge that her grandparents owned up in the mountains in the Carolinas, I think. And so at the beginning of the story, she's kind of unfulfilled by her job and, you know, the way these things go. And she finds out that the lodge that her grandparents had has gone on the auction block. And without thinking about it for more than 24 hours, she's had a bunch of money in savings and she decides to buy it sight unseen. She shows up and of course it is a wreck. I mean, it has been gutted and torn apart and it's not at all what she used to remember. So she hires a contractor by the name of Matt. And of course there's gonna be a romance between her and Matt. It is absolutely adorable. Again, takes place at the holidays. It is just utterly delightful. Um, you know, this was such a sweet story. The one thing about Nancy Ningle is that there is no adult content in her stories. They are clean, sweet stories perfect to get you into the Christmas spirit. I really like the characters of Liz and Matt and you meet all the other characters in this small town. You almost want it to become, at least I did, a series because I wanted to read more about a lot of these other secondary characters that you meet throughout the course of the novel. Delightful. Utterly delightful. If you are a fan of Debbie Maycomber's Christmas type books, you definitely need to check out Nancy Ningle. Um, in my opinion, the two of them are some, like, you know, kind of just go hand in hand. If you like one, you're definitely going to like the other. Really, really enjoyable. Highly recommend this one. I loved it. Um, the next one that I finished was The Scrooge of Loon Lake by Carrie Nichols. This was also a heavy Christmas book week, you guys. Um, another contemporary romance. This is book number four in the Small Town Sweethearts series. Harlequin Special Edition number 2727. Um, this one had a uh, uh, on sale date, uh, a publication date, excuse me, of October 15th of 2019. Average rating on Goodreads of 4.57 stars. I gave this one four stars for my Triple RC challenge for the month of October. This was my Reader's Choice book. Um, <clears throat> again, special thanks to NetGalley and to Harlequin for sending me an eARC copy of this one to review for you guys as well. So this one was a really adorable story as well. This was about Natalie and Des. So Natalie and Des meet, of course, at the very beginning of the book. And this takes pl place in small town Vermont. Um, again, it is the fourth in the series, but I absolutely think you can jump into this one on its own. So uh, Des is a, a, a war veteran. Um, he, after injury, came home from the war. And he's kind of living in solitude up in Vermont. 
in this kind of cabin in the mountains. And he does glass sculptures and things like that. That's kind of his job. And he does beautiful ones. So he meets, as I said, Natalie at the very beginning. And Natalie has a son who three years prior, when he was two years old, was in a horrific car accident. Um, a, car, a car jumped the curb and hit a bunch of people standing on the street. And Natalie's husband and son were in that crowd. Her husband was killed and her son was very seriously injured. He has actually stopped speaking and hasn't said anything since the accident. Um, and he does a lot of different therapies. And one of the therapies is like an, an equine therapy. Is that what you'd call it, equine therapy? I'm not sure that that's the exact terminology. But they use horses to help heal, you know, emotional and physical things with these children. And this program that her son absolutely loves is being closed down because they don't have the money to continue. So Natalie approaches Des about an auction that they're doing, a holiday auction. And she wants him to make some ornaments to sell. And he kind of turns her down. He, he's very much, as the title suggests, he is a Scrooge. Leave him alone. Don't bother him. He wants nothing to do with anybody else. But of course, Natalie and her son, Sam, start to kind of get under his skin in a good way. And the two of them develop kind of a friends with benefits romance, if you will. But of course, it develops into something more. It is absolutely adorable. I really love the interaction between Des and um, Natalie's son, Sam. I thought that was super, super sweet. Um, a great heartwarming Christmas story. Small town romance. I absolutely love this one. And I highly recommend that you pick this one up as well. Um, next up, Meant to be Yours by Susan Mallory. Um, this is another contemporary romance novel. Um, this was narrated on audio by Tanya Eby. Um, book number five in the Happily Inc. series. Um, this one was published on October 22nd of 2019. Uh, average rating on Goodreads of 4.26 stars. This is another one, guys, that I gave four stars to. And again, special thanks to Net uh, NetGalley and Harlequin for sending me an e-arc of this one to review as well. Um, this book was delightful. I this, this is the Susan Mallory I know and love. I did talk about The Summer of Sunshine and Margot earlier this year that I had to review from NetGalley as well. And I didn't absolutely love it. But this one I thought was the perfect blend of romance and quirkiness, which is what I think Susan Mallory is known for. Um, this is the story of Renee and Jasper. And Jasper you met in previous books. Um, and I know a lot of people were kind of saying we want Jasper's story because he featured, I guess, quite heavily in the last book as, you know, kind of a secondary character. But now he's finally getting his own story. So he is a mystery writer. Uh, actually, he writes about serial killers, fictional serial killers. Um, and he has a long running series um, with a main detective. So he has kind of been tasked, he's, he's finishing off the series, and his editor and publisher are kind of like, hey, you know, maybe your detective guy should have a girlfriend. So he's kind of being tasked to write a woman. And he meets Renee, and Renee works for the Weddings Out of the Box um, business in Happily Inc., California. Um, Happily Inc. is a town, if you don't know, if you haven't read this series yet, and I highly encourage that you do so that um, builds itself on weddings. It's kind of like, if you want a fun, cool, different destination type wedding, go to this town because this wedding outside of the box business can put on any kind of wedding that you want. And, you know, so Des, or not Des, excuse me, Jasper starts talking to Renee about um, kind of how to write a woman and, and how to, you know, what happens in a relationship because he doesn't think he's very good with women. And it's delightful. Um, the two of them are so great together. I thought that they were adorable. There is some backstory with Renee that you don't find out until about halfway through the book. And I don't want to say anything because it is a spoiler, but it was delightfully quirky. Um, it, it's one of those things like, do you believe in that or not? Like, do you think that that's actually a thing? Um, but it was so well handled and I really, really liked it. Um, you know, it just kind of made it that much more fun, in my opinion. And yeah, again, I really enjoyed this book. The whole series is utterly fantastic. And I highly recommend that you go ahead and check it out. And I loved it. Um, this is, again, the Susan Mallory that I know and love. And another fantastic book from her. And I'm looking forward to more books in this series. And I do hope that she writes a bunch more. The next book I have to share with you guys is Twice in a Blue Moon by the great Christina Lauren. 
Uh, this is a, another contemporary romance novel. It was narrated on audio by Erin Mallon. This was also published on October 22nd, 2019. Uh, average rating on Goodreads of 3.70 stars. I gave it three and a half stars. I did not sadly love this one and I was so stoked about this one. Again, special thanks to NetGalley and Simon & Schuster Canada for sending me an e-arc of this copy to review. This was not on par with The Unhoneymooners in my opinion. You guys know if you watched a few months ago when I did read The Unhoneymooners, I gushed about that book. Pretty sure it was a five-star read. I'm pretty sure it was the favorite book that I read that month. This one just did not live up to The Unhoneymooners. Yes, they are completely different plots. Yes, they are completely different stories. But I, I expect more from this author duo. Do you know what I mean? And this one just fell flat for me. And looking through the reviews on Goodreads, I don't think I'm the only one to think that. Um, the story is of Tate and Sam. And essentially, Tate and Sam meet... When, they're, when she's 18 and he's 21, and they are on res uh, respective vacations to London, England with their grandparents. So Tate's gone with his grandfather. He is from Vermont. And, uh, uh, excuse me, Sam has gone with his grandfather. He's from Vermont. And Tate has gone with her grandmother, and she's from Northern California. Now, Tate has a bit of a secret that she has been keeping since she was a child. She's been told by her mother and grandfather not to talk about this thing. You know, I debated in this review whether to mention it, but it does factor into a huge secondary, like the second part of the story. That essentially Tate is the daughter of one of the most famous actors in the world. That her parents were at one time married, and she, you know, when she was about eight years old, they divorced after a series of uh, scandals and things like that involving her father, involving cheating and another woman and a potential love child with this other woman he's been sleeping with. So... Her parents divorce, her mother packs her up, and they move to this small, small, tiny community in Northern California where she's raised by her mom and grandma. And she has pretty much been told to keep quiet about who she is. They don't want the press hounding her. They don't want, they want her to have a normal existence. So she's always been told you cannot talk about this. But she's kind of always wanted to, to meet back up with her dad again. Because, of course, she hears things from her mother and her grandmother. And, you know, she wants to know kind of what actually, what is he like? He, he sends the occasional birthday card and things like that. So anyway, she ends up revealing this, this truth to Sam one night um, in London when the two of them are spending some time together. And then one thing leads to another and he ends up telling the press who she is, where she is, and her entire life changes. And then the book flash forwards 14 years to present day. And Tate is now a very famous um, movie star. Um, she, you know, in her own right, and uh, the entire secondary or the second part of the story takes place on this movie set where she is now acting in a film with her father. Turns out it was written by, you guessed it, Sam. So the two of them meet back up again and, you know, truths come out. She's, of course, still angry at him for him telling this newspaper about, you know, who she was and things like that. It just, again, the story just fell flat for me. It just, it was an interesting plot. It, you know, had great potential. My biggest thing is I just didn't like Tate, I think. She just came off as just like everybody owed her something because of who her father was. Even when she was younger, when she was talking to Sam, she's like, you know, my dad is so-and-so and I want to be famous. Like, you know, I want to be an actress too. And, you know, by me finally getting to, to meet up with him again, that's going to happen. Well, that's not necessarily going to happen unless you have talent. You know what I mean? She just felt to me like the world owed her something. And I didn't like her attitude. And yes, she was angry at Sam. But, you know, she made the choice after the truth came out. And she was, yes, she was hounded by the press and her life changed. And I totally get that. And there is a point that Sam makes in the book stating, you know, he kind of has always followed her because he didn't know what the aftermath or the fallout was going to be. Was she going to excel after, you know, the world found out who she was and being under, you know, the public eye? Or was she going to turn to drugs and, and, you know, kind of ruin her life kind of an idea? And he would have felt guilty about that. Um, but yeah, I just felt, you know what, too, when I was listening to the audiobook, I it felt short to me. It was about eight hours long on audio. So it's over a 300 page book, but it just felt short. It felt like there was something missing. And well, it wasn't a horrible book, three and a half stars is a more than average rating from me. It just wasn't my favorite. If you're looking to start with a Christina Lauren, 
I absolutely recommend The Unhoneymooners. Maybe save this one till a little bit later. The next book I want to share with you guys is another one that sadly I did not completely love and I really wanted to. And this was Holiday by Candlelight by Laurel Greer. Um, another contemporary romance novel. This is book number three in the Sutter Creek series. Harlequin Special Edition number 2730. This one was published also on October 15th, 2019. Average rating on Goodreads of 3.55 stars. Guys, I gave this one three stars. Um, so this one was average, but I had some major issues with this one. Um, again, special thanks to NetGalley and Harlequin for sending me an e-arc of this one to review. So, I'll start off with what I didn't like, and then I'll get into what I do like so we can end on a high note. Um, I saw this book on NetGalley, and I got super excited, and I have two friends, very close friends, who are both Jewish. Um, and immediately I posted this book, and I'm like, check it out, guys. Harlequin is putting out a Hanukkah-related romance. I was so stoked. So again, I have two friends who are Jewish. I grew up with a friend for like my whole public school career. One of my best friends was Jewish. I spent Hanukkah at her house on occasion. I am familiar with the holiday. I, I'm, I'm no expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I kind of understand exactly what it is that's being celebrated. Um, and I was so super stoked to see this, you know, the diversity in another winter holiday kind of being showcased with a major publisher like Harlequin because they are kind of known for their Christmas stories. And to go into a different religion, I think, was absolutely fantastic. Along with the fact, if you'll notice on the cover, that our male lead is Asian, as of, of Asian descent, obviously. Um, and again, diversity. I'm like, yes, this is fantastic. This is exciting. How is it going to work into the story? Unfortunately, the author really didn't do a very good job, in my opinion. Um, it, it, I'll go with mostly with the Jewish aspect of it. Um, you know, I know a lot of other people, I've read other reviews on this book, and a lot of people were talking about um, the fact that he's half Japanese. Um, our main character's name is uh, Kaleb. Kaleb? I can never say that name. Kaleb, I think it is. And <clears throat> it's mentioned a couple of times, and, you know, but again, I don't think you need it thrown in your face the entire book, and I think that's how diversity is done well that you don't need it constantly said every other page that so-and-so is a person of color or is this or is that or is the other thing. Um, <clears throat> you know, it is mentioned a handful of times, but I think unless I had seen the cover image, I would have never known that that is what, you know, that that is his nationality essentially or part of his nationality. Now onto the Jewish aspect of the story. Again, the couple is clearly lighting, lighting a menorah on the front cover. You would, other than the fact that they mentioned once or twice that he's Jewish, that's the only time, you know, there, there's even a point at the very beginning of the book, because the whole plot of this story, let me, let me back up a bit. Garnet uh, is our female lead in this story, and the two of them are putting together a Christmas party for their respective businesses. They, he is a former surgeon, and she kind of works in more holistic medicine. And their two practices are doing a joint Christmas party. And at the beginning of the story, she says to him, knowing that he is Jewish or part Jewish, if you will, um, hey, do you want to turn this into a holiday party, not a Christmas party, so it's a little bit more all inclusive, to which he pretty much replies, no, that's okay. I'm trying to fit in with everybody else anyway. Really? Um, so yeah, then he invites all of his friends to a Jewish dinner and essentially it's like, hey, come over for this Jewish Seder and, you know, we're going to have lamb. And then the next scene is they're washing the dishes after dinner. You get nothing that explains what it is. You know, I thought that was a perfect, a great opportunity for the author to kind of explain to the reader what's going on. You can have his friends who don't maybe know ask, hey, what is it that we're doing here? You know, and kind of do a quick little explanation, right? It doesn't have to go on for paragraph after paragraph after paragraph, but just a quick little explanation to show that, you know, and again, maybe he's a non-practicing Jewish person. Totally a thing. Absolutely fine. But don't show the cover being that this is going to be a Hanukkah story because it is not a Hanukkah story. I did take a creative writing class in high school, and there are two things that I took away from that class. Um, one of those things I think applies to this book 
and that is um, <clears throat> show and tell. Um, you know, you can tell your reader he's Jewish, and you can tell your reader, hey, blah, blah, blah. But you also need to show the reader that actually happening. You know, if, if you're going to mention the fact that he's Jewish, you need to make that be a plot in the story. Does that make sense? Because if not, it doesn't matter. It, it, it doesn't, if it doesn't influence or push the story at all, there's no sense in even mentioning it, in my opinion. Um, and I was, again, just highly disappointed in this. Now, what I did like is that he does suffer greatly from PTSD. He um, was in an accident two years ago where one of his best friends was killed. He was skiing and there was an avalanche and he was caught in the avalanche and his hand was actually crushed, which is why he is no longer a surgeon. He was a surgeon and because of his hand being crushed, he can no longer perform delicate surgery, which is totally understandable. So he does suffer from PTSD and um, I think that part of it was done well. Um, you know, his aspect of it, her, on the other hand, she really kept pushing him. And it's like, you know, he's got to kind of go at his own pace, you know. Maybe he'll work through this, maybe he won't, but don't push him. But she did insistently always push him, which kind of all also annoyed me just a little bit. So, you know, the more I talk about this book, a part of me kind of wants to even jump it down to a two and a half star. You know, is this one I recommend? Not really. If you are looking for a good Hanukkah romance, I'm sure there are a lot more out there. If you have any suggestions to me, please let me know because I am always interested in, in jumping out of the Christmas um, romance box and getting into some other winter themed holidays, Kwanzaa. Um, I have read a couple on the winter solstice that I've thoroughly enjoyed. Um, so yeah, I just let me know you guys if you know of any. I know I read the book by Sarah Wendell, which I really liked. I cannot remember the name of it off the top of my head, but I'll leave it linked in the description box below. She's the one who hosts the Smart Bitches Trashy Books podcast, and she does a really adorable um, Hanukkah themed uh, romance, which is delightful. Um, but yeah, so this one, not really a recommendation. You know, it was it was readable, but I just found far too many flaws with it. Um, and the last book that I finished this week, let me reach for it, sorry guys, is The Uncompromising Lord Flint by Virginia Heath. Um, this is, of course, a historical romance novel, um, book number two in the King's Elite series. Uh, Harlequin Historical number 1407. This was originally published this year in 2019, um, came out in January. Um, average rating on Goodreads of 4.25 stars, you guys. I gave it four stars. Um, this was for my 40 Years of Harlequin project. I adored this story so, so much. This was so much fun. Our main characters are Jess and Peter, and Peter is, of course, Lord Flint, and he belongs to the King's Elite, which is a... I almost, as I was reading the book, I kept thinking, I'm like, it's like a Regency James Bond. <laughs> Like an M16 kind of an idea, right? But for Regency times. Um, so they are protecting the crown. They work with the crown. And Jess has actually been um, captured in France. And she is being brought back to, um, to England to stand trial for treason. She has been working against the, um, the English government and the English monarchy. And, you know several people because of things that she has done letters that she has written to certain people have been murdered and you know so he captures her him and his team and they bring her back across the english channel to england and over the course of the story it is essentially in a way it's a regency road trip novel um the two of them are going from france to london uh, for her to stand trial but along the way of course they run into thieves and bandits and people who are out to get her and he slowly starts to learn the truth of exactly what it is that she was doing and why she was doing it. She has a very sad backstory. Um, my heart broke for her, to be completely honest. He was really rigid at first, but it's, it's understandable. She was coming back to be on trial for treason and was probably going to meet the hangman's noose. Um, so, you know, her future was quite bleak. And she kept trying to escape him every chance that she got. It was delightful. I really, really loved it. Both main characters were so super strong-willed and so butted against each other every chance they got. 
and it was a very slow burn romance to be honest you guys I mean it's not like anything happened until much much later in the book any kind of physical relationship but even feelings for each other didn't happen until much later the the main plot of the story was the two of them kind of you know figuring out what was going on um, with her and trying to evade capture from these bad guys who are also out to get her so he's trying to transport her but yet there are other people trying to cap capture her and bring her back because of the secrets that she has delightful utterly delightful if you love a good Regency romance I highly recommend this one it's not your atypical you know lords and ladies and dukes and oh my you know all those things I mean this was very much also an, a, a you know a historical intrigue in a way and it was I loved it I absolutely loved it and I highly recommend that you check it out so anyway guys that is all that I have for this video I do hope that you guys enjoyed it please let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books and what you thought about them or what was your favorite book that you read this week because I'd love to know that too and until my next video everybody take care and happy reading thank you all so much for watching bye guys